Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to FX Maniac. This is Sayed Mahmoud Amiri again. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this quick um, text inflation, text cloth inflation effect using Typeflow and 3D Studio Max. So it's going to be a very quick tutorial. It's a very fun effect to do. So you can do it with titles, with shapes, and humans, and everything. But before getting into today's video, I do want to thank my Patreons who have supported me through all this time. And if you want to support me, you can definitely go and join my Patreon page. And plus, you'll get some amazing project files. Plus the project file for this tutorial, which is this one right here. All right, so I'm going to go into a new scene, uh, 3D Studio Max. So you're going to go ahead and create your text or your object or whatever you want to inflate. And I'll just type in here, like, what? Just delete the text and we'll leave the max here. And then I'll go and add an Arial black font. Hit E and hit A for angle snap, E for rotate. Rotate it 90 degrees, scale it down, and we'll add a bevel modifier. So I'll set this to like probably 10, or maybe a little bit more, just like that. And set the level two to one and the negative, the outline to negative one, all right? So what I'm gonna do, is I want to create my type flow now so I'll go to the geometry like standard primitives I'll create my type flow and I'll open the editor and what I'm going to do is I will go and birth objects so I want the text to be a particle and then I'll select the text right click hide selection and by the way, if you're new to Typeflow, I have a tutorial called Typeflow for Absolute Beginners. You can start with this and also the spline and also the cloth for beginners. So I didn't mention this effect in the cloth beginners, but you can definitely go and check it out. And also I have the destruction basics, which you can check it out as well. All right, getting back to the tutorial. So I have this object, right, as a particle, the text. So right now I want to go... If I hit F4, you see that we don't have any subdivisions. And for the cloth to work, we need a lot of subdivisions. So in order to add subdivisions, I'm actually going to add the subdivide modifier. Uh, and I'll set this to 3 for now. But, you know, the more detail you have, uh, the more, you know, cooler it's going to look. But of course, it's going to take a lot of time. So for now, I'll set this to 3. And in the end, we'll probably set it to 1. So for now, 3. And now I want to convert it to a cloth. So click here, hit Tab and type in cloth bind and you see that the cloth bind is actually before the subdivide so it's only taking the contours of the object or the vertices but if you put it afterwards it'll take all of them and we don't want to see these ticks so you go to geometry and it'll set uh, turn off mark particles no geo so now we want to create an object right so as you see here the text is in its uh, original form and once the object collides with it it'll turn into cloth gradually and have this inflation effect. So we're, we want to do that. So we'll create our collider object. So I'm actually going to control right click and create a box. Sorry, a box. It can also be a sphere, but the box is actually, you know, much better. So just like that, I'll go back to perspective view. Yeah, I think it's okay. So we'll scale it up a little bit. Hit N to turn on auto key here and we'll go into like 50 frames and we will just move the box through the object all right and we don't want to see the box so just right click object properties we don't want it to be renderable and we want to display this as a box so we don't want to see it in the viewport visually but it just needs to be there so for now uh, I'll go I need to deactivate my cloth right so I'll type in particle switch and what that's gonna do is we have a couple options here so we have activate bindings and deactivate so we want the bindings to be deactivated meaning that the cloth needs to be deactivated not have any movements until unless the object comes in collision with it and then we want to turn it back to cloth so we'll go back here and i'll add a surface test meaning that i want to test for an object so i'll put it below the particle switch pick the object and it will set the surface test type to distance and that means if it comes to within the distance of the object like how much I want to set it to one so it's going to be the closest so if it comes to within the one centimeter distance of this object we want the cloth to be activated 
So I'm actually going to go and add a particle switch again. And this time I want to activate the bindings. So how do we know that they're activated? Uh, well, we need to go to our cloth bind and you have this option here. The length bias is basically control. If you increase this above one, what it's going to do is it's going to uh, sort of inflate the cloth, like uh, grow the cloth. But if you set this below one to like 0.6, it's going to shrink the cloth. So I'm going to go to display on the second event and turn off my particles in the geo. So you'll see that the cloth is actually shrinking down. It's looking like, you know, it's melting or something. I don't know. But in this case, we don't want this effect. So I'm actually going to go to the cloth bind. I'll set this to 1.4 when the cloth to grow. But you'll see that it's growing in a very weird way. So there's a couple of things we can do. First off, I want to select the tie flow. And I'll go to the modify tab. And here in the main settings, we have the time step. So the time step is basically controlling the quality of uh, simulation, especially like cloth simulation. So I'll set this to one by four, and now you'll see that it has drastically improved the quality of the cloth, but still you see that we don't have a lot of detail. And we don't want this effect. We don't just want the cloth to grow, but we want to fill it with air. So what we can do is we have another operator, it's called modify bindings. We'll add it here and uh, We'll go, there's a there's this inflation radius. The main thing here you don't want to forget is you go to timing and set it to continuous because we want the cloth to be continuously filled with air. So if you increase this inflation to like three, what it's gonna do is it's gonna inflate the cloth. So you'll see that it's inflating the cloth just like that. But we have a problem here. So the cloth is not actually colliding with itself. And to do that, we need to go to cloth bind and enable the CUDA collision solver and the self collisions. So self collision. And now the cloth will actually collide with itself and it's going to make it a lot more cooler. It's going to look a lot more cooler. And the other thing we need to do is go to the physics uh, on the tie flow modify panel and turn off default gravity because we don't want any gravity. And let's see here. So the cloth is actually inflating and stuff and it's looking nice but we want it to inflate even more so a couple of things if we decrease this to two we will have a lot more detail and the inflation is just gonna be much more smoother so you'll see we we have a totally different result and it's looking pretty cool so you see here but it's going crazy and wild so we don't want that to happen right so what we can do is I'll add a slow operator. So I'll add hit tab, slow, and you do want to make sure that it is after all these operators. And we'll set the value to, it is set to five, we'll set it to 30, because we want it to be much more slower. So it is going to slow the effect of it just moving around. So you'll see that now it is inflating and now it's staying in place, which is actually looking really nice and yeah so this is essentially the effect you can you can change it to like any object that you want you know and for removing all these detail i just added like still looking a bit low poly so if i hit f4 and go to the tie flow modify tab i'll add a turbo smooth and that'll make it much more smoother just like this one right and for the lighting, of course, I have some lights from this side and this side from the top. And you can you can go to my original project file, which you can find on my Patreon. I have one light to this side, one light to this side, and one light from the top, which is like a rim light. And I added like a background. And that's what it's looking. So it's looking nice, and you can go and check it out here. And this was essentially our today's tutorial, which was pretty easy. And the, the other thing that I don't want to forget is I also turned on the retimer because I want to make it like slow. So go to retimer, enable by speed, and we'll set this to like 40. So now you'll see that it's actually you know, inflating a lot more slower and looking much more better. So we'll minimize this. And this is how it looks. All right. So it looks pretty nice. And you can you can change the 
the object to whatever object that you want and you know enjoy the results render it out and uh, you know share it with your friends or even you know, if you upload it to YouTube mention me there and I'll I'll be more than glad to see it so this was the today's tutorial it was a quick one I hope you guys enjoyed it and if you did make sure to subscribe and if you want to support me and get some project files you can definitely go and check out my patreon page and I really do appreciate it alright so this was the today's video Hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, enjoy working.